Wel, uh, bod da, pawb bod diolch am ymuno a fi heddiw. Uh, this morning, as we get closer to St. David's Day, I want to concentrate on how we have strengthened our international relationships and raised Wales' profile on the world stage over the past five years. Now, while most of what we do in the Welsh Government is focused on and in Wales, we should and will not ignore Wales' place in the world. Our prosperity as a country has long depended on trade and inward investment. International companies employ thousands of people in Wales, and our homegrown businesses export Welsh maids goods and services to every part of the world. And every year visitors from abroad discover and enjoy our beautiful landscapes, heritage and culture. Now I became First Minister as the United Kingdom was negotiating its withdrawal from the European Union. The damage done to the relationship with our closest neighbours and trading partners means that over the last five years it has become more important than ever for us to strengthen our existing relationships with regional and national governments and to strike new friendships and partnerships. Our reputation in Wales as a committed contributor to those relationships has paid us real dividends. Since the pandemic, the number of diplomatic and international visits to Wales has increased from around 35 a year to more than 100. We've renewed agreements which set out areas of cooperation and closer ties with those countries and regions where we have shared interests. Last month, I was in Poland to update our Memorandum of Understanding with Silesia, an agreement first signed in the early years of devolution by Rodri Morgan and based on our shared history of industrial heritage. We signed agreements with Flanders and Barton Württemberg and revitalised our long-standing relationships with the Basque country and Brittany. And indeed, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Wales-Brittany relationship, the first international agreement signed on behalf of Wales for more than 600 years. Our relationship with Ireland, our closest European neighbour, has grown ever stronger, covering a wide range of areas from climate and trade to education, language and heritage. We hold an Ireland-Wales Ministerial Forum every year. The last one was in North Wales in October. And there's a great deal of activity which takes place all year round beyond the forum. For example, the Minister for Climate Change will be leading St David's Day celebrations in Dublin next month. And while we have, may have left the European Union, we haven't stopped being a European nation. We've maintained our Brussels office, appointed a Welsh Government representative on Europe, launched our Tithe International Exchange Programme for young people, and I will be in Brussels again on St David's Day this year, celebrating Wales at the heart of Europe. Now, the global economy has changed dramatically as a result of the pandemic, Russia's war in Ukraine, the wider price volatility due to geopolitical instability, and now the danger of a widening conflict in the Middle East. But despite these challenges, the latest data shows the value of goods exports for Wales was £19.9 billion in the year ending in September last year, up 2% compared to the previous year. We run a comprehensive export programme which last year helped Welsh businesses secure more than £82 million in additional new trade. And at the same time, Wales secured 47 inward investment projects in 22 to 23, a 9% increase, projects that created more than 9,000, pardon me, projects that created more than 3,000 new jobs. Now, our international work is not confined simply to government diplomacy and trade. It includes our long-standing Wales and Africa programme, which also covers ongoing support for the tree planting Size of Wales project, which is helping farmers in Uganda to improve crop yields and soil retention, 
and is teaching school children in Wales about the impact of climate change. The programme is well on its way to meeting its target of planting 50 million trees by 2030. Now, when we published our international strategy, we said we would use all the avenues open to us to highlight Wales on the world stage and our incredible supporting, su our incredible sporting success has provided us with fantastic opportunities to do just that. When Wales played in the World Cup final in Qatar in 2020, we designed a programme of more than 2,200 events in the UAE, the USA, Canada and across Europe. One of the lasting results is a partnership between young female workers at the National Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar and Amgeva Cymru here in Wales. The Rugby World Cup coincided with our Wales in France here. Once again, we combined sport with a programme of arts and music to help promote Wales and some of our talented artists to new audiences. Our Wales in France year will end this month when a Van Gogh portrait goes on show at the National Museum here in Cardiff, part of a loan agreement with the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. Now we've held a series of very successful Wales in themed years, which help to strengthen our relationships with partner countries. This year, we will be celebrating Wales in India. I will launch the year at the Indian High Commission in London as part of our St David's Day celebrations, while the Health Minister will launch it in Mumbai. Throughout the year, we will highlight and strengthen the connections between our two countries, focusing on culture, innovation, education, health, business and human rights. These events and vis visits are important as they not only build new markets and new opportunities for Wales, but they send a strong message to people from other parts of the world who have made Wales their home. They say that we are an outward looking nation, engaged with the rest of the world, a place of strong values, that we respect the relationships we have with other countries, and that we care about the people who come to make their futures here in Wales. So finally, I've mentioned St David's Day a few times uh, this morning, and this year will be my last St David's Day as First Minister. I will be celebrating our patron Saints Day in London and in Brussels, and as part of a very busy programme of events taking place around the world. A record number of embassies and high commissions will be holding events in London and in other parts of the world, including the US Embassy here in the United Kingdom. We're doing what St David asked us to do. Adini need a pithai bachain. We're doing those small things that collectively add up to a powerful programme on behalf of Wales and its citizens. For now, and for the last time, Dioch Ogalon Ichigi, and I turn to questions from our journalist colleagues here in the room and online. And first today to uh, Ethel Gwaur of BBC Wales. Dioch uh, um, Farmers across Wales say that you're not listening to them. Um, do you heed their concerns about the sustainable farming scheme and its effect, or its possible effect on rural Wales? Well, we have been in a continuous seven-year conversation with farmers in Wales. As soon as the United Kingdom decided to leave the European Union, it was inevitable that the patterns of farming support, which farmers in Wales had relied upon for 40 years, would have to change. And we've gone about that change in a very engaged and lengthy process. We're still in the middle of a consultation now, the third consultation on our scheme that will help farmers, fund farmers beyond the schemes we inherited from the European Union. We've had 10 engagement exercises in all parts of Wales during the consultation. They have been attended by thousands of farmers. So there are thousands of farmers who have taken the opportunity to be part of that conversation. Uh, those who have not yet been part of it, I absolutely urge them to do so because their voices will shape 
the final scheme and there's still time for them to be engaged in that. Um, can I uh, also turn to um, Gaza? Should uh, Sir Keir Starmer be calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza? And uh, would you be calling on your uh, colleagues in the House of Commons to support the SNP motion on this? Not for me to uh, advise my colleagues there. They will be having those conversations themselves. Sir Keir Starmer has called for an immediate ceasefire and a sustainable ceasefire and that's what everybody surely wants to see a ceasefire that can be put in place as fast as possible and then sustained so that that journey to a long-term two-state solution that protects the interests of people uh, in Israel and recognizes the legitimate interests of the Palestinian population that that solution can be pursued. That's the policy of the United Kingdom. It's the policy of the Labour Party. Uh, and uh, I hope very much that the voices that you hear around the world calling for that resolution are heeded uh, by those players in the Middle East itself. Oh, sorry, I have to fly that yeah, uh, of course. Uh, well, you would have been get a fermer now. I'm Blanadoyth. Ar ôl a adael yr Undeb Ewropeaidd, oedd yn angenreidiol i ni ffindio cynllun newydd i cefnogi ffermwyr yma yn Cymru. Yn ni wedi bod mewn sgwrs da nhw, blynyddoedd ar ôl blynyddoedd. Yn ni'n dal i wneud hynny. A, ni'n maes yn ymgynghori nawr ar y cynllun ni wedi paratoi, ni wedi cael digwyddiadau ledled Cymru, a, a mae gannoedd o ffermwyr wedi troi lan i siarad am y cynllun, i roi cwestynau, i wneud awgrymiadau, a ni'n dal i fewn i'r ysgwrs na. Ble mae pobl ddim wedi codi y llais nhw a hyn o bryd, y neges fi yw i dod ymlaen, helpu ni, helpu ni i cynllunio am y dyfodol ble allwn ni ar ei anni ffermwyr yng Nghymru i wneud y pethau ganyladwy yn y maes bwyd a'n y maesydd eraill maen nhw'n gallu ei wneud i helpu ni yng Nghymru a troi hynny ni'n gallu helpu ffermwyr hefyd. Diolch yn fawr. Hamish. Thank you, First Minister. The four commissioners at the fire service were put in place to re-establish confidence in the fire services in Wales. We know that firefighters say they don't have confidence in Stuart Millington, who was appointed by those commissioners just over a week ago. Do you have confidence in those four commissioners and in the process which ended up with the interim appointment of Mr Millington? Well, just to take one step back, uh, you will know that the Morris report into the culture and the running of the South Wales Fire and Rescue Service uncovered a pattern that was so unacceptable that the minister took uh, a course of action that has never previously been taken in the 20 and more year history of devolution in handing over the running of that service to commissioners. That illustrates the depth of the challenge. And surely nobody would have believed that in taking on that challenge, that there would not be some rough weather along the way. But having appointed commissioners, the Welsh Government absolutely supports them in the work that we have asked them to do. I've no doubt it will be challenging. It's been challenging already. But if you're going to change a culture with the depth of difficulty that the Morris report uncovered, you have to expect that there will be, you know, there will be some rough weather along the way and we will support the commissioners in carrying out the very important job that we've asked them to do. Since this story was broken by ITV Wales, there have been calls for, the, for a Wales-wide review of the, the culture in fire services. I think the fact that this has caused such a lot of furore over the last week because of the appointment of Mr Millington, perhaps those calls are even stronger now because perhaps the Commissioner's appointment isn't enough to tackle the issue that's there. Is it time to commission a Wales-wide review? Well, the Minister will be meeting later today uh, senior people from the two other fire and rescue services that we have here in Wales. Uh, she will be looking to them to provide assurances 
that they have looked at the Morris report and held that as a mirror against uh, the way in which those services operate. And I think what everybody will have seen for themselves is, is that if the minister believes that action needs to be taken, then she has demonstrated in the way she responded to the Morris review that she is certainly willing to do that. So, you know, the story continues here in Wales. It hasn't a line has not simply been drawn under it by the appointment of commissioners uh, in South Wales. There will be important lessons elsewhere, and the minister will be monitoring that very carefully to make sure that if there are instances elsewhere that need to be put right, that action is being taken to do so. Anish, thank you very much. Uh, Ruth, on the screen. Hi. Thanks, Best Minister. Um, you listed to Ethel there a lot of ways that you say you're engaging with farmers. Um, so engagement exercises, consultations, etc. Clearly they're saying they're not being heard. So what's the way forward? Well, the way forward is to continue in the conversation that we have established here in Wales, as I say, not just in the last seven weeks or the last seven months, but continuously since it became inevitable and unavoidable that a new scheme of support for farmers in Wales would have to be established. The Minister is meeting senior uh, officers of the two farming unions in Wales this afternoon to hear from them about the parallel exercise that they have been uh, conducting. And if you look at the scheme that we started with and the scheme that is now in its third iteration, you will see right through it the influence that farmers have had on the proposals that are being put forward. And I confidently expect, and I've heard the Minister say it, that the next version of the scheme will be different to the current one because of the voices of farmers in the current consultation. So I understand that this is a difficult time for people in rural Wales, that people feel that their way of life uh, is under attack from the forces of change that go on around them. We're seeing that in other places as well. But change is unavoidable. What we need to do is to work together to create a pathway to that future in which the public purse in Wales will go on investing uh, in farming communities and in rural Wales. We're absolutely committed to doing that, but where that investment provides a return for the public. If you expect the public to invest, the public has a right to know what that investment is creating. Top of our list is sustainable food production, but there are those other environmental goods that in an era of climate change are essential for us to see in the countryside here in Wales. There are real opportunities for farming in Wales. They will be different and the process of change is a challenging one. The way through, in answering your question, can only ever be in dialogue and doing it together. Thank you. And can I ask your reaction to the um, go slow process that have been happening across Wales? Uh, well, um, my starting point is that Legitimate protest is absolutely a right, a very important part uh, of the way that we conduct uh, debate and discussion here uh, in Wales. And while people conduct those protests in a way that is consistent with uh, the law, then there is every right of people uh, to do that. There is a line somewhere. Criminal damage is not acceptable. Having a major impact on other people's lives that prevent them from going about their legitimate uh, business is something which I'm sure those involved in the protest will want to think about. Uh, because whether it makes the point you want to make or whether it just counterproductively has that impact in other people's lives is a matter that I'm sure those people involved in those protests will be thinking carefully about. 
Ruth, thank you very much. I'll go to Claire here in the room. Thank you, First Minister. So over the past few months, we've seen a lot of discussion over where to draw the line between climate policies and livelihoods. Obviously, we've seen with Tata Steel and Port Albert, you know, 2,000 jobs going Greenpeace saying that that's not the way to do it if so many jobs are going. Farmers giving up 20% of their lands for green schemes when the industry is already facing many struggles. Some have said will be the final nail in the coffin for them. Um, potentially thousands of jobs being affected. For you, where's the line between climate policies and, and livelihoods? Well, look, there is no greater challenge that Wales faces or the globe faces uh, than climate change. There is no greater threat to the future of farming in Wales than temperature rises of the sort that we will see unless we are prepared to act now to protect the future of our children and our grandchildren. These things are not in conflict with one another. I just don't buy into that narrative that says that somehow we have to choose between jobs today and a burning platform that the world will become unless we're prepared to take action. There is a transition that is necessary and it must be a just transition. That's why we have argued with uh, Tata uh, that a longer length of time in order to get to the green steel production of the future is the right way to bring about the transition in that industry. In farming, we're not asking people to give up 20%. We are offering to pay farmers to use that 20% of their land in a different way in future, should they choose to do so. Remember, around half of farmers in Wales don't take part in the basic uh, farm payment scheme now. It's a voluntary scheme. What the public is offering to do is to pay farmers differently in future for them contributing to the solution to that climate crisis. Thank you. And of course, we know the consultation is still going on, but we've seen protests, we've seen the NFU Cymru speaking out against it, 100 tractors being driven uh, towards a leadership debate to find your replacement. Surely farmers are showing, no, we don't want this. That should be the consultation over, surely. The Welsh Government wants to go on supporting farmers here in Wales. But the bargain cannot be that the public puts its hand into the pocket to put millions of pounds, nearly £300 million every year on the table for farmers to just do whatever farmers think they would like to do with it. That cannot be the bargain. The bargain is that the Welsh Government and the Welsh public will go on investing in the future of farming. But they are entitled to a return on that investment. That is what the sustaining, Sustainable Farming Scheme sets out to do, to set out that bargain. Top of the bargain is sustainable food production. Of course we want to see farmers in Wales are producing food in ways that are consistent with the climate crisis. But there are things beyond food production that we want to pay farmers to do. And that's what the scheme is about. Now, as I've said, if you look at the scheme in its different iterations, it has changed and it has evolved and it will change and evolve again. But it will not change into what some voices in farming, not the, not the farming unions, not the people who turn up to the consultation exercises are arguing for, but some voices in farming want to argue that the public should pay the money and farmers should decide what to do. That can't be the bargain and sensible voices, the vast majority of voices in the farming community, understand that that can't be the way we face the future together. Thank you, First Minister. Um, junior doctor strikes are restarting again this week. Welsh Government say 5% is their best and final offer unless they get more money from Westminster. But junior doctors are arguing their aim is to restore their pay, which has um, gone down by being cut by almost a third. And many doctors are moving abroad um, for better pay and conditions. Um, how do you end this stalemate? How do we stop this industrial action on such a vital service? I mean, are you happy for this to continue to rumble on until the next general election? 
Uh, well, look, first of all, to say, as I always say, that the Welsh Government absolutely understands the frustration that are felt by public sector workers, whether they be junior doctors or people in our other public services, at the way in which their wages have been held down over 14 years of Conservative imposed austerity. That's where you get to that figure of the gap between what doctors were once paid and what they're paid uh, today. And the Welsh Government has made a commitment to pay restoration over a period of time. No government, certainly not this government, has the resources to fill that gap in a single year. But we have publicly committed to pay restoration as it becomes affordable in future. In the last week, we have reached an agreement with GPs in Wales. So we now have agreement with many parts of the health service workforce. Uh, I hope we can reach an agreement with our junior doctors as well. The only way you ever reach an agreement in the end is to be around the table together. Uh, I hope that junior doctors in Wales will be willing to come to the table to have those uh, discussions. They will have to be realistic. They will have to be discussions that recognise the realities of the financial position facing the Welsh Government and public services in Wales. But in the end, discussion is the only way in which these matters are resolved. Thank you, First Minister. Um, as we've heard from previous questions, um, there are issues at the culture of the fire services here in Wales. Junior doctors are going on strike and farmers have got protests over the sustainable farming scheme. So it seems a bit of a shambles at the moment. Can you give any commitment today that these issues will be resolved before you leave office? I mean, is this really how you want to bow out of Welsh politics? Uh, well, I remember saying when I announced that I would be uh, leaving this job, uh, that there will be a great deal to do in the first quarter uh, of this year. And it is certainly turning out uh, to be like that. So there will be many issues that will continue to be on the agenda of whoever does this job uh, in future. What we will go on doing in Wales, as we have all the way through, is to try to approach resolving these problems in a spirit of social partnership, where we get people around the table together, where we recognise that there are differences between us, but where in Wales we are still fortunate enough that most people want to find a resolution, want to find that space where, from different perspectives, you can come together in order to shape uh, the future. The Welsh Government has never given up on that uh, endeavour. We certainly won't be, and it offers us the best and maybe the only route to resolving some of our present discontents. Thank you all very much indeed.